Hello, sixth graders. I hope you're having a great day so far. I hope your science quiz went well today. Um, what I need you to do now is take out your math binder. Um, we are going to take out packet 6-14. It should be page 10 in your table of contents. Okay, go ahead and take that out. We are going to turn to page 20. This is the last day of integers um, of our rational number packet. Um, we are going to review tomorrow and we have a quiz on Friday. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm hoping that by doing this video you guys will not be behind um, because of my absence. Okay, so this is page 20. Um, we are going to start um, at the top here. It says use the number line below for problems 1 through 8. Use the next number line below for the problems 9 through 16. So the goal for today is we're going to start by looking at the distance between um, rational numbers on the number line, so decimals, fractions, and things like that. And then we are going to be also looking at um, inequalities which we did earlier in the year, um, but we're gonna get a little refresher on that um, with integers. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look back here at page 20. Um, they've given us this number line to help us. The best thing that we can do is um, go ahead and add our, our um, values onto our number line so that way we can graph more easily. So, um, and in this case, we're talking about decimals. So they've already broken it up nicely into 10 equal parts between zero and one. So that means each one is a 10th. Each little tick mark is a 10th. So this is one tenth, two tenths, and so on. Oh, I should have alternated the top and bottom of the number line here because it's getting pretty crowded already. Okay, and then for the negative direction, it's the same thing, just reversed. So I'm gonna go this way now. I'm gonna try to write a little bit smaller. So this is negative one-tenth, negative two-tenths, negative three-tenths, and so on. This will really help us when we, um, gr when we graph on that number line because you'll be able to see more easily where everything goes. I do recognize that some of you will not need to mark up your number line, but just in case you do. Okay, so um, the first thing I'm gonna do uh, is look at number one. It says, how do you get from uh, two tenths to seven tenths? Well, two tenths is right here and seven tenths is right here. So I'm not gonna mark for everyone, but let's do this. Okay, so we can say that we um, move right five or five tenths spaces. Okay, so if you're having a hard time counting this out, one tenth, two tenth, three tenth, four tenth, five tenth. You can also just subtract this, and you'll get the difference, which is 5 tenths, okay? Um, what is the distance between those? We have already decided that that is 5 tenths, okay? Um, now let's look at um, our next one. Uh, it says, how do you get from, we're going to go in the opposite direction now, I'll use a different color. We're going to go from 7 tenths to 2 tenths. Okay, so in this case, we're going to move to the left 5 tenths spaces. Okay, and you can count it out or you can do the subtraction like we did before. This is one tenth, two tenth, three tenth, four tenth, five tenth. And if you need to, like I said, subtract. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Let's go ahead and look at another problem. It says, how do you get from negative 4 tenths to 5 tenths? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use a different color. So um, our four, negative 4 tenths is right here. And we're going to move all the way. We're going to pass 0. And we're going to land right here at 5 tenths. Okay. So to get there, we move right. And let's count how many spaces that was. We know that our spaces are broken up into tenths. So this is one tenth, two tenth, three tenth, four tenth, five tenth, six, seven, eight, nine tenths. Okay. And um, in this case, it's, it's not as straightforward to just subtract here. We've already decided that that distance is nine tenths. But when we have when we're going across from the negative to the positive, we need to first find this distance. So this is four negative four tenths and zero. The distance between those two is four tenths. And then when you go from zero to five tenths, okay, it looks like that five tenths. And we're just going to add them. So I'm going to put that over here. We traveled um, four tenths to get from negative four tenths to zero, and then we traveled another five tenths to get to five tenths, and we ended with nine tenths. Okay, how do we get from uh, five tenths to negative four tenths? We're going to start here, and we're going to go the opposite direction. So in this case, we're going to say move left. And it's the same distance, it's just in a different direction. Okay, so that distance is still going to be 9 tenths, even though it's the opposite direction. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at um, our fractions down here. Um, we have some tick marks already on the number line for us. It looks like they've broken up um, our holes into four equal places. So let's go ahead and put our negative whole number, our negative integers on the other side. So this is four, a distance of four, which means we're going to go four here, negative one, and then one, two, three, four. This is going to be negative two. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that first problem. It says, how do you get from one-fourth to three-fourths? Okay, so let's actually plot that. Um, to find one-fourth, we are... They've already done it for us, but we would usually um, break up that space between 0 and 1 into 4 equal parts. And then 1 fourth is right here. 3 fourths, it's already broken up into 3 equal parts, so that's 1, 2, 3 fourths. Okay. Um, so to get from here to here, we're going to move right. And let's take a look at how we've moved here. We, these spaces are already broken up into fourths. This is one fourth and two fourths. Okay, so we moved right two fourths, which we can reduce to one half. So what is the distance between those two numbers? It's one half. For number 11, if we start at three fourths and we go back the other direction, Okay, then we're just moving left. So we're going to move left. And that distance hasn't changed. We already decided the distance between those two points is a half. And just, it doesn't matter which direction you go, the distance between those two points is still going to be a half. Okay, so the distance between them, just a half. Okay, let's do the next set. It says, how do you get from two and one-fourth to a half. Okay, well first of all, let's plot those points on our number line. So two and one-fourth, so we're gonna go one, two, and we already know that this number line is broken up into fourths. So this is two and one-fourth. Now we need to put a half on. Well, a half is halfway between zero and one. So I'm gonna put one-half right there. 
And how do you get from this point to this point? We're gonna draw our arrows so we can see. Okay. We moved, so move to the left. And let's see how much we did. We know that one fourth, two fourth, three fourth, four fourth, five fourth, six fourth, seven fourth. So that's how far we've moved. And let's go ahead and change that into that improper fraction into a mixed number. And we'll get three or one and three fourths. Okay. So that distance, one and three fourths. Because um, this is all on one side of the zero, you can also subtract it. So we could have done two and one fourth minus a half. And if you did that math and found a common denominator, then you would also get one and three fourths, okay? <clears throat> uh, I would like you to pause the video for a moment and try 15, 16, 17, and 18 and see if you can figure it out. And then once you get a chance to try it out, you can unpause it and then I will show you the solution. All right, I'm hoping you did what I suggested and tried those problems out. Um, let's go ahead and go over um, the next part. Um, it says, how do you get from 3 fourths to negative 1 fourth? Well, 3 fourths is right here. We've already got it mapped out on our number line. And negative 1 and 1 fourth is over here. So we start at 0, we go to negative 1, and then 1 fourth is right here. Okay, so we're going from here all the way across zero to our negatives over here. So we know that we're moving to the left. Okay, and we just need to figure out how many spaces that was or how far apart those were, the distance. And we already know that the tick marks are one fourth apart. So this is one fourth, two fourth, three fourth, four fourth, five fourth, six fourth, seven fourth, eight fourth. And when we reduce that, we get two, okay? Now, just like we did up above with our decimal, when you have, when you're trying to figure this out math, math, um, using calculations instead of your number line, um, what you need to do is separate this on either side of the zero. So 3 fourths is 3 fourths away from 0, okay? Negative 1 and 1 fourth is 1 and 1 fourth away from 0. And since we want the whole distance from here to here, we're going to add this distance and this distance together. And if you do that, you're going to get two, which is the same answer we got when we just counted up our spaces. So this distance is two. All right, I'm running out of colors and that's okay. We're on that last problem there. Um, it says, how do you get from negative two and a half? Okay, so here's negative two. And remember these are fourths, so one fourth, and this is one half right here. I'll put a big line right there. Um, and then we need to go to one and three fourths. So we start at zero, we go one, one fourth, two fourth, three fourth. Okay, so if we wanna get from here to there, I'm gonna draw a big arrow. Okay, we're moving to the right. So we're gonna move right. And let's see how many spaces that is. These are all fourths, so I'm gonna count them up. 1 4 2 4 3 4 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 so that's 17 fourths that's how far away those two points are away from each other we can change this from an improper fraction to a mixed number so this will be 4 and 1 fourth okay so what is the distance it's 4 and 1 fourth and if you didn't have a number line to help you, you're going to see that the distance away from zero for negative one and a half or two and a half is two and a half. 
and the distance from 0 for 1 and 3 fourths is 1 and 3 fourths. So you can add those. So let me make it clear here. Negative 2 and a half is, negative, is 2 and a half spaces away from 0. And positive 1 and 3 fourths is 1 and 3 fourths spaces away from 0. We can just add this up. And we're also going to get 1 or 4 and 1 fourth. Okay. If you found a com common denominator and added those, that's what you would get. Okay, so our distance here is 4 and 1 fourth. All right. Let's go ahead and look at some word problems. Word problems are just... Um, Word problems are just um, real life situations that we can apply this to. Hold on just a second, I can make sure it's still filming. Give me just a moment. It is still filming, good, okay. I have a low battery, so I'm hoping I can make it through the whole lesson before it dies. Okay. Um, when we're looking at a type of bird that dives into the water to find food, we're going to use the number line to the right um, as needed to help us complete this page. Okay, so we're going to label the tip, tick marks on the number line to the right. Um, if the one represents the ele an elevation of one yard above sea level, um, what does zero represent? Okay, we should know this by now, but zero is sea level. Okay, so we can write that in, C level, okay. So this bird, we're going to call it T, um, is flying two and a half yards above sea level and dives to catch a squid directly below it that is one and one fourth yards below sea level. I'll write a number that represents the squid's elevation relative to sea level. Well, if it's below sea level, okay, so let me go ahead and put that in. This is negative one, this is negative two, and this is two, three, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and label um, my bird and my squid. Um, the bird is two and a half, which is right here. We're going to do a T. And then the squid um, is negative, is below sea level. So we're going to go below sea level one and one fourth yards. Here's your squid. Okay. And it says write a number that, it, that represents the squid elevation relative to sea level. Well, that's when we use negatives. See, the squid is down here. Um, below sea level, so that uh, distance from sea level is going to be negative. And they've already told us it's one and one fourth yards below sea level, so we can just write this as negative one and one fourth. And we're talking about yards here. Okay, which is at the higher elevation, the bird or the squid? Include an inequality to justify your answer. Okay, well, the bird's up here. It's at two and a half, and the squid's down here. It's below sea level. It's at one. It's at one and one fourth yards below sea level. So which one is at a higher elevation? The bird. Okay. So we've got the bird, um, which is two and a half yards. That is greater than negative one and one fourth. Sorry about that. Hold on just a second. This is what happens when you are filming at home using a phone taped to the bottom of a chair. Um, okay, so you can see the inequality that I used here to show that. Um, which is the greater distance from sea level? Well, you can look at your number line, okay, and see that um, the distance here and the distance here. Obviously, the bird has a further distance away from zero. You can see that. Um, but we also want to write an inequality. Remember, distance from zero, 
or sea level is absolute value. So we would say that the absolute value of two and a half is greater than the absolute value of negative one and one fourth. Okay, so this is how we show that the distance is greater. In this case, the distance is greater than the, the elevation of the bird, okay, or the distance from sea level. What is the distance between the bird and the squid? Okay, um, so let's go ahead and take a look here. Remember, these are fourths. So one fourth, two fourth, three fourth, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so they're 15 fourths apart. Okay, so let's go ahead and change that into a mixed number. This is going to be three and three fourths. Remember that distance is always positive, and this is yards, okay? All right, to number three. Okay, so we're looking at that bird again, um, and this is a different bird. Um, it, it's flying one and a half yards above sea level and dives to catch a fish directly below it that is two and three-fourths yard below sea level. Okay, I want you to pause, and I want you to do this problem on your own, parts A, B, C, and D. Hopefully you pause the video and try this problem. Um, let's go ahead and go over it. Um, let's go ahead and plot our bird first. It's at one and a half. So we're gonna start at zero. We're gonna go one and a half. Here, we're gonna label it G. And then the fish is two and three fourths yards below sea level. So that means we're going down. So this is negative one, negative two, and then these are all fourths, so one, two, three fourths. Okay, so write a number that represents the fish's distance below sea level. We did it right here. This was our fish, and it is at negative two and three fourths, and this is yards. Okay, it says, which one is at the higher elevation? Well, if you look at our, up, up here, at our bird, and then down here at our fish, obviously the bird is at a higher elevation. Okay, so we can say that one and a half yards above sea level is greater than two and three fourths yards below sea level, which is negative, okay? Which is the greater distance from sea level, the bird or the fish? When we're talking about distance from zero, that is absolute value. So we're gonna go ahead and write an inequality for this. So the absolute value of one and a half and the absolute value of two and three fourths, okay? Well, even though this is much lower than, than the bird's elevation, this one has a greater distance away from zero. So we're gonna say, that um, the absolute value of one and a half is less than the absolute value of negative two and three fourths. And then what is the distance? Let's go ahead and count it out. It's in fourths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it is 17 fourths apart. And we will change this into a mixed number. This is going to be four and one fourth yards. That is how far apart they are. Okay, let's go ahead now. Turn the page. We're going to go to page 22. All right, graphing inequalities. You have already learned how to graph inequalities, and now we're just applying it to integers, okay? So let's see what, it lo what this looks like. Um, here are two ways of representing solutions to inequalities on a number line. We're gonna graph um, the solution set for the inequality n is greater than three 
when n is restricted to be an integer, which means that it's, it's basically a whole number, but it can be positive or negative or zero, okay? Um, and x is greater than three when x is any number. So what that means, if we're gonna graph a solution set, is we wanna plot points at everywhere that it is greater than three. So in this case, four is greater than three, five is greater than three, six is greater than three, and remember those arrows mean that it goes on forever infinitely. So every number after that, that is a whole number, will be greater than three, okay? And then if we are drawing an inequality on a number line, we're for graphing it, not just plotting the solutions, then we, because it's not equal to, it's just greater than, we have a hollow circle and we shade everything that's greater than it. Okay, so this is just a little recap. You should know how to do this, so. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do some graphing. It says graph the integer solution of n is less than negative 2. Okay, first of all, we need to get negative 2 on this number line. So here we go. It's not equal to, it's less than. So that means it's going to be a hollow circle. And it's going to be everything that is less than negative 2. Well, remember when we look at this number line, this is less, this is greater and we're gonna shade everything that is less than negative two. You guys remember this? I sure hope so. Okay. List four integers that are less than negative two. Goodness, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Well, um, let's graph some more points. That will help us. Okay, so we can see that negative three is less than negative two, negative four, negative five, and if we were to keep going, I'm sure you can come up with something more creative, but I'm gonna do negative six. Okay, um, graph the solution of x minus negative two for all the values. You know, I think I got that backwards. I think on number one, they wanted us to plot the points. Okay, so if we did that, I'll go backwards a little bit. Okay, so then this would have been, it should have been, negative three is less than negative two, negative four is less than negative two, negative five is less than negative two. Um, and now it says list four non-integer numbers that are less than negative two. Well, non-integer means that it's some kind of fraction or decimal, okay? So if you look at, we flipped flopped here, so let's go ahead and do arrows showing that this one, this number line really should be down here. Um, well, if you look, negative two and a half is less than two. Um, we can say negative three and a third. Okay, that's right about there. Um, negative four and one-tenth. Why not? Um, you could do negative five and a half. Okay, so these are all things that are non-integers. Okay, how many numbers exist that are less than negative two? It goes on forever, okay? Infinitely many, okay? Why is negative two not a solution to the inequality x is less than negative two? Well, when you read it, it's pretty obvious. We're saying that it has to be less than negative two. Okay. So we can say x is less than negative two. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and plug my phone in because it's about to die. Um, why don't you see if you can graph, it says on the number line to the right, graph the solutions to x is greater than negative one and x is less than negative one. Okay, so go ahead and try that and then we'll talk about it.
All right, I'm just gonna hope my phone doesn't die before we're done with this lesson because I cannot get my cord free. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, check this out now. So um, we got negative one here and we have, we wanna graph um, x is greater than negative one. So we're gonna shade everything that's greater than it. Okay, on the same number line, they want us to graph everything that is less than negative one. So I'm gonna circle it again and I'm gonna shade everything that is less than negative one. And it says, what is the only number that is not graphed? Well, it's circled right there negative one. Now it says circle all numbers below that are solutions to the inequality x is greater than five. Okay, well any negative numbers are out because the negative numbers are going to be less than five so we can x out that. 4.99999 that's going to be just below five. And five is not greater than five. Uh, five, this one is slightly greater than five. This one's obviously greater than five, and this one is also greater than five. Okay. All right, I hope you're feeling good about this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stop there for today because that was quite a long haul already. Um, and we'll, we can probably go over this page on Thursday when I see you again, okay? So if you have extra time at the end of class today, um, you can start your homework. I left that in the sub plans for the sub. And uh, just a reminder, if you're doing the retake for um, uh, geometry, that is Thursday after school. And I will be in the classroom Thursday during lunch for anybody who needs help preparing for that. Have a great day, you guys.